So today we will be going over galaxies. This is a very long topic, so I suggest we'll just get started. What are they? And yes, I have put a question mark down for this. Um, they are a collection of planets, stars, dust, and other stellar objects. So, you know, gas, black holes, everything else in between, and just in a random shape. Now, the biggest galaxies can contain trillions of stars. I repeat, trillions. That's a thousand times a million into another thousand, to put it simply. So it's just a million million, if you want to look at it that way. And there are four main categories of galaxies, spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies, peculiar galaxies, ir and irregular galaxies. What is a peculiar galaxy? Um, I'm going to explain that now. So, but first of all, let's start off with the most basic one, spiral galaxies. We actually live in a spiral galaxy. The milk, uh, uh, so what are they? They're always rotating disks of stars, dust, gas, and whatever else happens to be in the galaxy. And typically in the center, they have a sort of bulge of older red, redder stars. And this can also be like a horizontal bar to where the red stars can encompass nearly the entirety of the center of the galaxy. And that bar, per se, is pretty common, and it goes across the entire center of the galaxy. So, and after that, there's always an extended halo or ring of older stars surrounding the central bulge of red stars. They always contain, they're always a rotating disk of stars, dust, gas, and whatever else. They have a central bulge of old redder stars, and they, and this is pretty common to be honest it this bar always goes across the center of the galaxy this halo of uh, of like sort of slightly older stars but not red stars surrounds these this bar and they always have spiraling arms that extend outwards they're pretty obvious and there are multiple types or multiple flavors of spiral arms grand design spirals which are pretty clear and um, very well defined from the very center to the very edge of the galaxy. Flocculent, that's how it's pronounced, um, flocculent. They're not too clear and they act more like cotton. So you know how whenever you, whenever you have a wound, you, your parents always take a tuft of cotton with some Dettol and dab that over your wound. And then there are also some very big and wide arms, or there are also some very narrow and tightly wound arms, sort of like a spring. So you can have a very tightly wound spring, like this, if you want to look at the video. You can have a very tightly wound spring like this, or you can have a sort of a, a kind of wide sort of spring like this. Um, I understand what you just explained, like uh, a spring or some open thing. Okay, so um, so can everyone see my video? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so is so what I mean by widely flung arms is that if the central part of the galaxy is here, you can have the arm go something similar to this. This would be considered like sort of widely flung. And then this, where it like gets very tight very quickly, but that's what you call sort of tightly wound. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, they're also, they look different based on the way we look at them. So if we look at them from the very top, you can see the entirety of the spiral. If you look at them from an angle, you can see most of the spiral, but not all of it. And then if we look at them directly side on, so from this sort of angle here, let's use a pointer. Thank you. So if you look at it from the top, you'd see the entirety of the spiral at an angle is what this is. And on their mid plane, you'd only see like a, just a flat disc or just like a flat bar, because that's what they are really, just discs. But anyway. So the important things to note are the grand design of flocculent spirals. 
the um the basic design of the spiral galaxies and yeah that's about it now then we're moving on to the second type of galaxy elliptical galaxies unlike their name they're not always elliptical in shape you have some that look more like tennis balls just super sized and others that look more like a mango but super sized they don't have a very clear like structure per se they don't have this more like a spiral galaxy where you can tell what their structure is it's just sort of like a bunch of stars just like in a spherical looking shape and these tend to vary in size pretty greatly you can have some that are half the size of a typical spiral galaxy whereas others can be maybe 40 to 50 times at the very least um, and then you have dwarf ellipticals. These are only a couple thousand light years across. Um, to put that into context, that's maybe, that's less than 1% the size of the Milky Way, our galaxy. And yeah, you can have ones that are 100 to 200 times bigger. Now these actually don't contain a lot of dust or gas, but, and they you, tend to contain a lot of older stars in them. So a lot of the stars tend to be more red in color. Now you're probably wondering how they form at this point. This is where things start to get complicated because they're formed with galactic collisions. Hey, I have a question. Yeah. Um, what is the amount of certain galaxies in the universe means an uh, imaginated amount? That I do not know, to be honest, because you, because honestly, the universe, see, look, there's this, there's a thing called the observable universe. And then there's this thing called like, I guess the true universe. The observable universe is basically as bi is basically how much of the universe we can see. Whereas, and then, but we don't know whether it's bigger than that or whether it's smaller than that. That's the thing. We don't know. So I can't give you an answer to those questions. The universe can contain a simply tremendous number of galaxies. We don't know. I mean, it contains well over a billion at the very least. Okay, thanks. So, yeah. But anyway, when two galaxies collide, I mean, the crash will take a million, like hundreds of millions of years to fully complete. So you know how when two cars crash, it's over in almost a couple seconds at the very most? Like a car may go into another one and that's it, or a car just might roll over a couple times. That will take maybe, what, two, three seconds. But when galaxies collide, it can take hundreds of millions of years to fully like stop crashing, per se. This is because while they might be moving at hundreds of kilometers per second, that's what this means, they may be moving at incredibly fast speeds to us, but they're, in, they're massive. Remember, galaxies are millions of light years in size. Like, they're millions of light years across. So it's a very slow process. And typically, you don't have two galaxies colliding head on, but more sideways. So they'll more hit each other at a sort of angle, per se. So what this means is that the stars at the edges of the two galaxies, they are sort of drawn out into massive, huge orbits. And then they're just like flung completely outside the, uh, into like the outer reaches of this new galaxy by the gravitational forces or the tidal forces here. Okay. And then in the case of ellipticals, what happens is that eventually the gravity their mutual gravity starts to pull all the stars and stuff back together and they form an elliptical galaxy. This is usually what happens. But here's something that is very important to note. I want everyone to remember this. Two stars are unlikely to hit each other at all during a, ga during a galactic collision. Why is that? the distance between two stars is just un incomprehensibly big. So that even though they're part of galaxies that contain millions of stars, no two stars will, uh, are ever going to collide during a galactic collision. 
just to give you some context, the closest star to our sun is about two to six light years away, if I'm not mistaken. You can search that up just to verify. But what that means is it takes light about two to six years to come from that star to our sun. That's how big a distance we're talking about. That is a very big distance. And, we, and for us, if we were to do that journey with our current technology, we would take millions of years to get, to get even halfway. So the distance between two stars in a galaxy is so big that even if two massive galaxies were to collide, it's very possible that no two stars will ever hit each other. After that, we have gas clouds, which are always a part of the galaxy. Go on, someone had a question? Um, you told that two galaxies collide. Yeah. Um, so is there a chance that the Milky Way in the galaxy in which we are living in may also collide to some another one? I am not going to say anything about that yet because I have something interesting in the presentation related to that. You will just have to wait. Okay. So, anyway. So, about gas clouds, which I mentioned are a part of galaxies, they are very big and they do collide because they're just masses of gas. They're going to collide. And when they collide, they gain gravity because mass equals gravity. And they create heat because the gravity is forcing the gas particles to get together. Therefore, they form stars during a galactic collision. So they glow in these beautiful, um, where's my cursor? Thank you. They glow in these beautiful pink and white colors as stars are formed during a galactic collision. So these events can be gorgeous, but they take forever. So yeah. Does anyone want me to repeat anything beforehand? No. Great. Now, there are other types of collisions. I mean, you can have cases where a massive galaxy absorbs a smaller galaxy when if a smaller galaxy gets too close to the big one. And our galaxy, the Milky Way, it's doing that currently. There are two massive swooping streams of star above the galaxy. I couldn't find pictures of it, but I will send you some on the um, WhatsApp group chat if possible. But there are two massive streams of stars that, um, that are sort of the remains of smaller galaxies. They flow over the top of the Milky Way. They're, they're the remains of the Sagittarius and Canis Majoris minor galaxies. They're called minor galaxies because they're small. And yes, this Canis Majoris is, well, is called major. Don't question it. Just, just remember Sagittarius and Canis Majoris. That's all I'm going to say. Moving back to classification, this is the peculiar galaxies. Now, what does peculiar mean? It means weird or not correct per se. So why are they called peculiar though? They're not exactly shapeless, but at the same time, they are definitely not an elliptical galaxy or a spiral galaxy. They have a shape that's very weird. And they're almost always because of collisions most famous type of peculiar galaxies are called ring galaxies. You can see one in the background here. This is what, what happens is a smaller galaxy goes through the center of a bigger one and the small one forces stars to the outside and a ring of stars per se is formed outside the, in the, the smaller galaxy. So you get this beautiful looking ring shape. Now, uh, moving on, you got irregular galaxies. They're called irregular because they have no shape whatsoever. Just none. Nada. They, you can try finding a shape in it, but you never will. Now, the biggest ones could just be because of a collision with maybe some run in with a galaxy or something. And the smaller irregular galaxies may not have enough stars in them or, any, or enough mass in them to make a coherent shape. Now that's all you need to know about galaxy classification based on shape. You do classify galaxies based on behavior. Before I go into this, 
Is there anything anyone wants me to repeat from the previous slides? No? Great. Um, yeah, so we do call ga some galaxies active galaxies. Now this is based on the type of energy they emit. Now, some objects in space, this is just a quick story for you. Some objects in space were found to be emitting unbelievably high levels of radiation, much too high to be stars. But when you viewed them through a normal telescope, they just seemed like a normal star, just a far away one. Now, they were named quasi-stellar radio sources at first because at first, a lot of energy was being sent in this part of the electromagnetic spectrum, radio waves. But then the name was shortened to quasar, which sounds cool. Um, but as more were discovered, they were shown to be emitting light in the X-ray and even gamma ray parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Why is this incredible? Because this takes unbelievable amounts of energy. Gamma radiation this is the single highest energy form of radiation possible. You cannot get an, a type of radiation that is more powerful than gamma rays. These are very destructive energies, uh, types of radiation. So an object emitting gamma rays at the level at which we saw was, com was completely incomprehensible. And these were later found to be galaxies. But but the thing is that in order to create, like they're so powerful that they literally have black holes in them because the amount of energy required, it meant that the gravity, that the gravity of these galaxies must have been incredible. Therefore, I mean, you need a lot of gravity to create gamma rays, x-rays and anything here really. I mean, not in this area, but here really. So and in order to do that, well, Look at black holes. Like I said, you need a lot of gravity to create them. So a black hole is found at the center of all active galaxies, and in fact, all, all massive galaxies. So most of the material of the galaxy orbits the black hole just outside the event horizon. If you remember from the previous classes, the black hole's event horizon is the point, uh, is the line at which you if you pass it, you can never come back. So most of the material orbiting the black hole is just outside the event horizon or further out. So nothing actually falls in the black hole itself. But the thing is, when surrounded by matter, the black holes actually heat up the matter due to the speed at which the, the matter will be orbiting the black hole. And that matter emits a lot of light in all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. So they emit light in the form of gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, you know, just black, blue, green, all those colors, um, infrared light, microwave light, and radio waves. And to emit light in radio waves and these and gamma rays and x-rays, you need unbelievable amounts of energy. Therefore, only a black hole can produce that. And something that you may not know, our galaxy, the Milky Way, does have a supermassive black hole in the center, and it's massive, well over four million times the mass of our sun. It's a very big black hole. Don't worry, though, it will never really reach us. Um, now, we're going on to galactic neighborhoods. What do I mean by this? I just mean like, like the way galaxies are spread throughout the universe, per se. Now, galaxies can be found in small groups, like the, like the Milky Way is. Our galaxy is, what, is part of what's known as the, quote, local group. It's called the local group because it's, well, the nearest a group of galaxies to us. There are many small galaxies in the, in the local group, the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda or M31 galaxy. It's, the name is not Andromeda M31, it's Andromeda Galaxy or the M31 Galaxy. And yes, Andromeda, the Andromeda Galaxy is on a collision course with the Milky Way Galaxy. They are heading at each other at 
at almost completely directly. Now, rem the thing is, this is a galaxy maybe two and a half million light years away at the very least, and we're not traveling at at the speed of light or anything. So this event will happen billions of years in the future. So we don't need to worry about it. But when the two galaxies collide, they will initially like stretch out into massive like tendrils per se, but then they'll combine into an elliptical galaxy, which astronomers have given the name Milkometer. It is underwhelming per se. Anybody has a better name, you can suggest it to me later. And then there are galaxy clusters. This is where hundreds of galaxies are bound to a certain area by gravity. And I do mean hundreds. These are much bigger than groups, meaning tens of millions of light years across. The group, groups can, ha can have maybe up to 50 galaxies at most. Clusters can have um, hundreds at the very least. Now, they, they may or may not have a massive elliptical galaxy in the center because most galaxies in, the, in these clusters may collide and form a massive elliptical in the center. But that's a big if. They may or may not have it. Now, the closest galaxy cluster to us is the Virgo cluster, which is in the direction of the Virgo constellation, as you would think. So, yeah. And then you got galaxy superclusters. Now, this is where multiple clusters are bound to a given area by gravity. The local group and the Virgo cluster are part of the Virgo supercluster. And the Virgo supercluster, short form SC, is part of the Laniakea supercluster, which itself is stretching 500 million light years across and contains at least 100,000 galaxies. Anybody want me to repeat anything before this point? Great. Now, here's something important. Superclusters are not randomly distributed among the universe. They're, it's more along inter interconnected and intersecting filaments. That's the technical term. The universe, this means that the universe will seem more like a sponge. So the way to think about it is that these filaments are more like highways and galaxies and superclusters are, are like sort of, superclusters are sort of cities along these highways. And um, galaxies are sort of the residents, if you want to put it that way. Um, now the area, so because of that, in between these highways will be empty areas. Now, it, now the highways are filaments, obviously, and in between them are, these areas just empty of anything, areas of, well, nothingness. They're called voids, per se. And I do mean just completely empty. They are literally made of nothing at all, just straight up nothing. And that's actually everything. So is there anything anyone wants me to repeat? Just anything because this is going to be a very long quiz. Um, no. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so um, you were explaining something about the collisions. I couldn't hear you properly. Okay, so let's go back to collisions then. Um, please explain what you have told in the last 10 minutes. Uh, sorry, I was having a call and I can't hear you that time. Okay, sure. Just give me a minute. I'm just going to go over collisions for someone real quick. So basically a galactic collision, it will take a very long time because of how big galaxies are. They might be, and what happens is that they don't collide just head to head. Most of the times it's more sideways. So one galaxy hits another at an angle. Um, so yeah, a galaxy can hit one another one at an angle per se. And so stars at the very edge are thrown outwards due to gravity and because of very complex physics. But suffice it to say, at the edge of the galaxies, stars are thrown outwards and then 
in most cases, they will merge back together again and create a elliptical galaxy, which is just a random mass of stars, to put it simply. No two stars will ever hit each other in a collision. Um, but gas clouds will hit each other because of just how big they are. And when they collide, they form stars during the collision due to gravity and heat. Okay. And, there, and just another quick point, galaxies, when some other types of collisions are where one galaxy cannibalizes another, to put it simply. Sorry, what? Uh, another example, like another type of collision is where another galaxy cannibalizes a smaller one. Basically, where it eats another galaxy up, like the way our, the Milky Way is doing right now. There are two minor galaxies that's consuming right now. Sagittarius minor galaxy and Canis Majoris kind of minor galaxy. Um, can you tell particularly what are the gas clouds? Gas clouds are, well, just clouds of gas, just literally clouds of gas, like oxygen, um, hydrogen, etc., etc. And oh. yeah, so when they collide in, um, when they collide in a galactic collision, they glow very bright due to um because they tend to form stars during a collision. So you missed what I said about um. Uh, I think it was uh, um galaxy, um groups and stuff. So yeah, to put it simply, groups they're just small collections of galaxies, small ones, maybe upwards of ten to twenty galaxies tops in a group. Now, our galaxy is part of the, quote, local group. There are small ones. This contains very small galaxies, but two big ones dominate the group. Our Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy. Andromeda galaxy is on a collision course with the Milky Way galaxy. When they collide, they will form an elliptical galaxy called Milkometer. And then bigger than groups are galaxy clusters. There are just hundreds of galaxies are bound to an area by gravity. And these are much bigger than groups. There are about 10, tens of millions of light years across. Um, yeah. um, galaxy groups can be hundreds of thousands of light years across, so much smaller. Um, and most galaxy clusters will have a supermassive elliptical galaxy in the center of them because of collisions. The closest um, galaxy group to, I mean, cluster to us is the Virgo cluster in the direction of the Virgo constellation. And finally, there are superclusters, which are group, which are like clusters of clusters, to put it simply. So the local group and the Virgo cluster are part of the Virgo supercluster. And the Virgo supercluster is part of the Laniakea supercluster. The Lanya Kea supercluster is 500 million light years wide and contains at least 100,000 galaxies, at the very least. And one more thing is that superclusters, they're not randomly distributed among the universe, but are long interconnected and intersecting filaments, making the universe seem more like a sponge, per se. So in between these filaments are areas empty of anything called voids. Voids are just empty empty, empty. There's nothing in them. So everyone knows what a sponge looks like, right? Yeah. Yeah, so in the sponge, there are like sort of like little areas where there's no like material in there. You know what I mean? Like little holes. Yeah, holes um, with the empty space. Yeah. Now think of the universe like that with all the material being like yeah, super clusters and stuff and all the Holes being voids. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I hope everyone's doubts are clarified because this is going to be a very long quiz. Is everyone ready? Um, yeah. Okay. So, question one What are galaxies? Private chat answer, nobody shouted out. 
Good job, Barnika. All three of you are correct. It is option C, just a collection of stars, gas, dust, and whatever else is in a galaxy that orbits a given area. Question two, the, what are the four main types of galaxies? Private chat answer. It's spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies, peculiar galaxies, and irregular galaxies. Question three, what, are the type, what type of stars are in the central parts of a spiral galaxy? It is all the reddest stars. I was looking for the word red or old, so that works. What are the different types of arms a spiral galaxy can have? The two main types that I mentioned, what are they? The answer is grand design spirals and flocculent spirals. Remember how I mentioned that there were some very clear ones called grand design and some choppy ones called flocculent? That's what I meant. Are elliptical galaxies always elliptical? No, they are not always elliptical. Some are spherical in shape, like the one in the background. Do ellipticals have a structure at all? And what are they like in terms of their composition? They don't actually have a structure per se. It's not a structure, it's just a mash of stars in the shape of an elliptical galaxy. How long can a galactic collision last for? So the answer is hundreds of millions of years. I was pretty liberal with this because the, because the range is not really clear. It can be maybe a million years or much, much longer than that. So all three of you get the mark as long as you said a million years or so, or upwards of that anyway. Um, will two stars hit each other during a galactic collision? The answer is no, they just won't. They, they're very unlikely to hit each other. Galaxies will hit each other, but stars will not. Do stars fall in a galactic collision? And how do they fall? They do form. Gas clouds collide and create stars. Dita, you went way above and beyond. So, what are the names of the galaxies the Milky Way is consuming right now? The answer is Sagittarius and Canis Majoris Minor Galaxies. Why are peculiars called peculiars? The answer is it's because they have a weird shape that doesn't fall into either of the, of the previous categories. Like they aren't elliptical or uh, um, spiral galaxies. What, are, what is the most famous type of peculiar galaxy? Ring galaxies, that's the answer. What defines an active galaxy? Like what makes a galaxy active? I'm sorry, that's also not correct. It's their energy output. Remember, active galaxies are called active galaxies because they give out an, a simply unbelievable amount of energy. Now, there was another name for active galaxies. What is that name? I mentioned it in the slide, the short form, not the very long form. And what is uh, what type of electromagnetic radiation do these things release? Look, the name is quasar, and they released gamma rays and x-rays. So what gives a quasar its amazing power? Yeah, it's black holes. Yeah, and Bernie is also right. It, they do need a lot of gravity. Now, there is an imminent collision between the Milky Way and another galaxy. What is the name of that galaxy? Not the one we live in. The answer is the Andromeda Galaxy, or M31. Milkomeda is the name of the galaxy that will be formed after the collision. What is the closest galaxy cluster to us? It is the Virgo Cluster. What is the supercluster that the Virgo Cluster and the local group are part of? And which supercluster is that supercluster a part of? The answer is the Virgo cluster and the local group are part of the Virgo supercluster. That is part of the Laniakea supercluster. How big is the Laniakea supercluster? 
I didn't mention it. Question 20. Are galaxies and superclusters distributed evenly throughout the universe? That should be the universe. And if not, how are they distributed? No, it's along filaments so that the universe itself is more like a sponge than, well, or something. It's more like a sponge, put it simply. Now, there are empty spaces in between the superclusters if it's like a sponge, which it is. Now, what is the name of those empty spaces? It's voids. And that is everything. So, stop the stream. Let's see who got this all correct. So, drum roll. Well, okay. Good job, Barnica. You got 17 out of 23 correct. Ditya, you got 15 out of 23 correct. Arnav, you got 12 out of 23 correct. Now, that's all very well, because this is a pretty confusing topic anyway. So good job, all three of you. Is there anything you guys want me to ask? Or like anything you guys want to ask me? No. Okay, so yeah, it should be everything. So yeah, thank you for coming. Thank and you, bye. Nice thank day. you, bye.